In 2021, I took 1,386 laps on 366 different roller coasters. Some of those coasters I rode just once. Then there were some roller coasters I just couldn't get enough of. In this video, I thought it would be fun to count down the top 10 roller coasters I rode the most in 2021. This video will touch on my 2021 experiences specifically, rather than giving a general overview of the coaster. If you want more in-depth thoughts on any of these rides, I have separate reviews for each and every one of them. And most of these rides were featured in my Top 100 Coasters video that I just released a few days ago. Number 10. Velocicoaster at Islands of Adventure with 16 rides. I was worried this new for 2021 coaster would get monstrous lines just like Hagrid's, but this Intamin multi-launch coaster was a capacity machine. My first rides occurred just after the coaster soft opened in May, and I usually got on in about a half hour. Then when I returned in October, I was able to marathon this coaster for the first hour before the crowds arrived. Velocicoaster grew on me with each ride. The coaster excels in every area. It's about as well themed as a thrill coaster can be, and it has such varied elements. The mix of strong airtime and great inversions is just perfect and there's a reason this coaster gets endless praise. Number 9, Boulder Dash at Lake Compounds with 18 rides. This is still my favorite coaster in all of New England. The park started running two trains in this coaster on busy days more consistently in 2021, but most of my visits occurred on relatively quiet days when it still ran one train. Almost all of my rides occurred in the front row where Boulder Dash really shines. That is easily the smoothest seat, and also the best seat for airtime. After Lake Compounds moved their Halloween event to the daylight hours, I was worried I'd miss out on the coaster's legendary night rides again in 2021. But thankfully, I was able to attend an enthusiast event in September with one hour of pitch black night rides. Boulder Dash truly is one of the best night rides in the world, and I always relish those rides. Number 8. Apollo's Chariot at Busch Gardens Williamsburg with 19 rides. Early in the year, Busch Gardens Williamsburg cycled through the major coasters. On my spring 2021 visits, Apollo's Chariot was the best coaster operating, so I spent most of my time on this coaster. This B&M Hyper has super high capacity, so I was able to get a series of night rides where I walked right onto this coaster's back row. Apollo's Chariot may not be in my top 10 steel coasters anymore. In fact, it's towards the bottom half of the B&M Hypers now. But it is still an incredibly smooth coaster with some good drops in the back that will really have you levitating out of your seat. Number 7. Cyclone at Luna Park with 23 rides. This classic wood coaster at Coney Island has a rich history and Zamperla has retracked this coaster extensively over the past decade. The improved track work and ultra cushioned seats make this coaster easy to marathon despite its powerful airtime and very aggressive laterals. Luna Park wristbands in 2021 were only valid for 4 hours, but I'd still spend most of that time riding Cyclone because the limited attendance made it a walk on. Now, because of the park's policy that they fill the train front to back, I did have to linger by the main entrance a few times in between rides so I could get that coveted back car. That is where Cyclone has the best airtime. But towards the end of the night, most of my rides occurred up front. There just wasn't enough people in the park. In fact, the park was so quiet towards closing that multiple ride operators actually had to join me to mitigate the risk of the coaster valleying. Hearing the ride crew enjoying the coaster they operate daily was pretty neat. Number 6. Wicked Cyclone at Six Flags New England with 25 rides. This RMC hybrid coaster is a great complement to Superman. The faster, more aggressive airtime pops and frenetic pacing of this coaster never get old. I thought Wicked Cyclone ran more consistently than usual in 2021. In the past, the coaster would have fast and slow days. It ran fairly identically in 2021, whether it was early morning or night and if it was a warm or cool day. The operations on this coaster can be on the slower side, but I always make sure to ride a handful of times whenever I visit my home Six Flags Park. Number 5. 
Jersey Devil Coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure with 33 rides. I've had really rotten luck with this coaster. It always opens late for me, sometimes not even until the final two hours of the day. But when this coaster has been operational, I have marathoned it. The seating position where you straddle the track and point your knees inwards does get a bit uncomfortable after multiple re-rides, but I really like this coaster's elements if you're towards the back. And the coaster only got better as the season progressed. The biggest change was when the mid-course trim was disabled because this gave the second half more speed and power on those final bunny hills. On my initial rides, those final hills had really weak airtime at best. Now they give decent floater, even on cold holiday in the park nights, and that first half has always been very strong. Number 4. Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England with 40 rides. After not riding my home park's signature attraction in 2020 due to the pandemic, I made up for lost time in 2021. For years, the front row was my favorite seat in this coaster, but Superman got new wheels in 2019 that had the coaster running faster than ever, and my countless back row rides in 2021 confirmed the back row is now the best seat. While the sense of speed is incredible up front, the ejector airtime in the second half has way more power in the back. Superman is one of the best layouts of any coaster. It offers sustained ejector airtime in the first half and quicker pops of ejector airtime in the second half while also mixing in good positive G's in the pullouts and helixes. And the crew working Superman was incredible in 2021. They almost always had the next train ready to go when the prior one hit the brake run. Number 3. Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure with 43 rides. I routinely marathon this coaster at Holiday in the Park. There's something magical about riding a B&M Hyper that goes 80 miles per hour or 129 kilometers per hour when the temperature is at or below freezing. Nitro feels like it'll rip my face off. When the ride has a full train even in those conditions, the airtime is similar to summer days. Every hill gives decent sustained floater airtime. But when Nitro has a nearly empty train, particularly on windy days, you can get some really interesting rides. My most memorable rides on the season occurred on a day with 50 mile per hour wind gusts. I couldn't believe they even opened Nitro. The ride nearly valleyed during morning testing, and when it opened, Nitro was crawling over the hills in the first half, barely giving airtime. Then the mid-course trim was disabled, which gave the return run more power than usual. The final hills gave comparable flagector airtime to Fury 325's finale, which really caught me by surprise. Number 2. Candymonium at Hershey Park with 44 rides 2021 was the first time I was a Hershey Park season pass holder, and on most of my visits, Candymonium was the coaster with the longest line. But I always rode it at least 2-3 to three times each visit anyway because it's so great. So when I visited Christmas Candy Lane for the first time on a Friday night and Candymonium was a walk-on, I only rode that coaster that night. I rode it for 3.5 straight hours. Candymonium is one of B&M's best hyper coasters, and on the cooler days when most of my rides occurred, the trims were turned off. This had a negligible impact in the first half, which still gave the very strong and sustained floater airtime, but the final hills had some extra oomph compared to my summer rides. And coming in at number 1 is El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure with 51 rides. Considering El Toro opened a little late in 2021 and was closed for much of the summer, I'm stunned I got this many rides on this intimate prefabricated wood coaster but this just shows how awesome power hours are. I attended two of these events in early 2021, and I stayed in El Toro's back car for an hour straight each time without getting off. And one of those times was even on a day with 50 mile per hour wind gusts. El Toro's four best hills have some of the best airtime in the world, and I was more than happy to keep experiencing those elements over and over again. And while El Toro may not be as smooth as it was during its opening year, the fact I was able to marathon this repeatedly shows it's still much smoother than most wood coasters. So those were my top 10 most ridden roller coasters in 2021. What was your most ridden roller coaster in 2021? 
Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.